Welcome everybody, and thank you all for attending this workshop. As you may know, the Fulbright Foreign Student Program is sponsored by the US Department of State and funded by the US Congress. Amidist administers the program in Lebanon and in several other countries in the Middle East and North Africa. More than 400,000 Fulbrighters have participated in the program since its inception 75 years ago. The Fulbright Program awards approximately 8,000 grants annually. The program in Lebanon provides full funding for up to two years of study for a master's degree in the United States beginning in August 2022. So far, we have about 200 Lebanese alumni who completed the program. And it's my pleasure today to welcome one of them, Mr. James Karam, who is a management consultant with Strategy End in the Middle East. He has advised private and public sector clients across the GCC for the past two years working across functions and sectors, including telecommunications, investments, real estate, and the environment. James has also worked on the digital capacity building agenda within Strategy End, providing people with the right skills and tools to excel in tasks pertaining to data analytics, visualizations, and digital topics. Previously, he worked as mergers, acquisitions, and investment analyst with the Steed Capital Holding. Outside the work, James is passionate about assisting underprivileged people to achieve their full potential. He does that through his work with the Fulbright Alumni Association, along with personal mentorship initiatives. James holds a BS in actuarial science and a minor in finance from Notre Dame University, and an MS in Financial Engineering from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign while on the Fulbright program. He is also a certified financial risk manager. James is passionate about data analytics, finance, and basketball. James, I would like to welcome you and thank you again for uh, giving uh, some of your time and share your experience uh, with the, the Fulbright applicants or whoever is interested in applying to the Fulbright. So thank you again, and I leave the floor to you now. Uh, thank you, Hala. Uh, thank you for providing uh, this space uh, where we can communicate with uh, applicants and, and tell them about this amazing experience. Um, I'm going, I'm going to outline what I'm going to talk about. So first, I'm going to touch upon why I decided to apply to the Fulbright program. Uh, then we'll talk about a bit as well the choice of the major, since I know some of you might be interested in that particular uh, path. Then I'll explain a bit about the experience itself, the Fulbright experience, be it from an educational perspective, also from a cultural perspective. And then we'll open the floor uh, for a live Q&A so that we can make this more engaging. Uh, so bear with me for a few minutes and then we'll, uh, we'll open it for Q&A. Okay, so first of all, why, why Fulbright? Why apply to Fulbright? And what are the pros of applying to, to this program? And what should you expect to get out of it? So I remember I was a student in Notre Dame University, uh, and my advisor back then, uh, the advisor of the program I was in the actuarial program, she told me, you know, there's this program called Fulbright, which is sponsored by the US State Department, uh, which provides students with a full funding to pursue their master's uh, studies in the US, fully funded by the US Department. And for me, this was uh, as if someone told me, you know, you could win a million dollars because I've, I've always wanted an experience to go abroad, particularly to the US, to study a master's degree. I wanted to do a specialization. And I knew that it, I did not have the means financially back then, given my social environment, to go and do that step on my own. And most of the scholarships that I used to hear about were partial scholarships uh, or scholarships that were specific to some nationalities and so on. So when I heard that there was this opportunity that was really tailored uh, to Lebanese people and others as well, but it also includes Lebanese people and, and really funds the whole scholarship. You only have to worry about your studying. That, that was great to hear. And this is when you know, I went online, I looked at what's the application for, 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 for uh, Fulbright, uh, what are the criteria that they look for in the candidates? Uh, and I was really excited to apply. 
So push forward a year or two, I applied to the program and thankfully I got accepted. Uh, so this is the part about how I heard about the program and what was, if you want, the value proposition for me when I decided to apply. Now to tell you a bit about the choice of the major. As an undergraduate student, I was really passionate to you know about numbers, uh, but not in a theoretical sense, in being an academic teacher, but more in how, how do we actually use these numbers in the financial markets and the insurance markets, like the application of mathematics, if you want. And for me, this was how I entered into the actuarial science program at MDU. Uh, during that program, I took a couple of finance courses. I became also interested in finance, so that's why I did the minor. Uh, and then I really wanted to complement my studies. You know, how does you know the application of uh, mathematics into the field of finance, uh, and be it you know the methods around optimization and finance, uh, uh, and all of these stuff around also the capital markets, uh, derivatives, how do you price complex products? I've had experience with pricing insurance policies, but I wanted to take that further into the field of finance. Uh, so this was really what, what you know, was exciting for me about the financial engineering program. I didn't have a clear view on what career I will be doing. Will I be working at a bank as, as a risk analyst? Uh, will I be working uh, uh, at a technical consultancy or advisory. I didn't have a clear view on that, but I just knew that I'm passionate about numbers. I'm passionate about finance. And I wanted you know, to sort of marry those two fields uh, and specialize further into them while getting that US experience, which in itself is invaluable. So this, is, uh, this takes me to the third point. So the third point is about my experience in the US. Now, I left to the US in August 2016. My program was three semesters. So it started in August 2016 and it ended in December 2017. Uh, I did my master's in the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So Illinois is, is the name of the state. Uh, you have Chicago, which is quite a big city in Illinois. It's quite known. It was like a two, three hour commute from the university by car. And uh, in Urbana-Champaign, you mainly just had uh, the school, which housed like 40,000 students, if I recall correctly, so that's quite big, and the community that was built around that, between restaurants, between uh, entertainment uh, anchors, between uh, schools, uh, healthcare, all of that. Um, so first of all, to talk a bit about the experience of moving to the US. For me personally, I, I wasn't a person who had traveled a lot previously. In fact, it was only my second time outside Lebanon, and the first time was just a couple of months before before my Fulbright experience. So for me, it was really a game changer uh, in terms of the experiences that I've been exposed to, uh, be it on a cultural level, be it on a social level, uh, be it also in terms of you know, behavior and what I'm used to. Uh, so this was in itself an amazing experience of being able to uh, go from a small town in Lebanon. Uh, I used to live in Sayle in Kisturvein and going all the way to, to Urbana Champagne. And this experience really teaches you a lot in terms of how to take care of things, how to live on your own, or even if you're living with a roommate. I lived with a roommate who was from completely different uh, nationality, completely different beliefs, uh, systems. Uh, we had nothing in common, uh, you know, except for we both spoke English and we both attended the University of Illinois. So this in itself is a very enriching experience on a cultural level. Uh, the academic program was amazing. Uh, Urbana-Champaign is a top-notch school, uh, not only for financial engineering, but also for, for a lot of other degrees. It's really known for accounting, for finance, for civil engineering, uh, for industrial engineering. A lot of, a lot of fields are, are very, very well renowned uh, in Urbana-Champaign. So as you can expect, the competition is very different than what you get locally in, in your local school and in your local classroom. And this also teaches you, you know, how uh, you might be in a class where you're, you know, the top performer, but then you go to another environment where you're average and uh, you, you really have to push much, much, much harder to, to be able to prove yourself. Um, so, and it also gives you a lot of opportunities to learn about new topics. There's a lot of advances that maybe um, 
here they are implemented five, 10 years later, but there they're being studied by the professor who's teaching you the course. He's actually doing the research on, on what you're gonna read about five years later. So you get also exposed to ideas that you won't be able uh, to get hold of easily if you're not in that you know, sort of experience. So this is an on an academic level. Now, Fulbright, beyond the academic experience itself, provides you a lot of opportunities to get in touch with the American culture, American history, American experience, American people, and also with other international Fulbrighters from around the world. So during my stay, I recall there was like two, three, I'm not sure about the number, of workshops. Now, these are workshops where they fly you out of your state where you're doing your studies, take you to another location, house you in, um, uh, in an hotel or in some place. And then you're, you have an experience for three days, four days, five days a week where you're with other Fulbrighters. And I'm talking about 60, 70, 80 different Fulbrighters from all over the world. Uh, and you're getting workshops on different things. We had uh, leadership building exercises, team building exercises. Those were, you know, targeting soft skills. We had other experiences which really targeted uh, getting us to know the culture. They used to take us to places that are known culturally and historically in the US to learn more about that. We used to also uh, have a lot. We had one workshop where you could actually choose something technical to learn about. So for me, I, I chose a workshop. I still remember the name. It was called From Lab to Market. So in that workshop, I flew out to Utah for one full week where uh, we, we went to the University of Utah and they have this amazing accelerator program to take ideas from the university, from the research of the professors, from the ideas of the students and try to commercialize them and try to launch products and startups out of these ideas right within uh, the environment of the university itself. So this was really an amazing experience for me to learn more about entrepreneurship, about startups and so on. So you really also get this opportunity beyond your chosen field of study to learn about other technical uh, topics that you might be interested in. Uh, as I said, and I'm going to reiterate this because this is extremely enriching, you are in the same room sometimes, in the same room with 50 people from 50 different nationalities. And I, I can't tell you enough how much this experience uh, teaches you in terms of um, accepting others, learning about different cultures. It's very, very enriching. Uh, and here, of course, uh, if I may, big thanks to the Department of State who sponsors this whole thing. Uh, I actually left Lebanon with barely any uh, financial support, for personal financial support, and I didn't need anything throughout all my stay. The flight was paid for from here to the US back and forth, insurance, uh, the tuition, you get a monthly stipend, you know, to pay for your housing, to pay for your expenses. Uh, these workshops that I'm also exp uh, describing are also fully, uh, fully covered by the program itself. And you also get other, uh, you know, small stipends for uh, if you need a laptop, if you need some, uh, I don't recall it specifically, but there are several stipends for if you want to attend some academic workshops, say, uh, that they provide. So this is it about the experience in the US. And on top of all of this, I would like to add one thing. If your chosen program of study is beyond a year, then you get the summer after your first year where you can do an internship, right? Uh, and I've I've personally had this opportunity. It was also in a different state than where I was doing my degree. So it was also an experience to go somewhere and explore somewhere new in the US. It was in Milwaukee in Wisconsin. Uh, and you also got to go to an American corporation, uh, work there, interact with the people who work there. Uh, so you also got this opportunity, which is also very enriching. So I advise you, if you end up going to this program, while you will miss Lebanon a lot while you are there, try to spend what free time you have in enriching experiences there that you, will not, that you might not get another time to do. Because this is really a very valuable time for you to develop, to develop on a personal, on a professional uh, level as well. And when I say personal, I mean everything, uh, culturally, socially, uh, your belief systems, uh, your knowledge about the world, about other nationalities, everything. Uh, 
so, so this is, I, I think, sums up my experience in the US. And just to round it up with a little bit about what I'm doing right now, uh, in case you have questions about that as well. So I finished the program. I came back. As you know, the program stipulates that you come back to your uh, home, home country. Uh, so I came back here. I worked for a year as a uh, mergers and acquisitions and investments analyst with Shadid Capital Holding. It's an insurance um, player in the region. Uh, and then now I'm, I'm, I'm a management consultant uh, with, with Strategy Hand uh, in the region. Um, so just to sum it all up, if, if I want to summarize the whole experience, it was really a life-changing experience for me. It was a game changer. Uh, if it wasn't for the Fulbright program, I don't know if I would have been able to get the opportunity to go from Notre Dame University uh, in Zoo, Musbah, all the way to Urbana Champaign, uh, get the amazing network that I got there and get the huge exposure that I can't express enough how much it helps you sort of achieve so, uh, upward social mobility in your life by opening new doors for you. Uh, doors to new opportunities, to new careers, be it on an academic level. I know many people who went on to pursue their PhDs after their master's degree, or if you want to pursue a professional career, uh, how much recognition the Fulbright program has from all uh, organizations, be it local or regional or international. Uh, I believe this is it from my side. I want to keep the floor for you uh, to ask questions. If you want to send them by the chat, if you want to unmute and uh, uh, talk, uh, you can do both. So you can feel free to ask uh, James whatever you want, but not about the application. If you want to learn more about the application process, uh, you have to attend uh, another uh, workshop that's giving every Tuesday. You can go and visit our website and uh, register for it. So we can see. Um, okay. Uh, in the chat. Uh, may I ask something? Yes, sorry, yes. go ahead. Okay, so this is very exciting. This is a huge deal for me because I've, uh, I've really been looking forward to have a chance to go out of Lebanon to work outside, experience travel, uh, and just make a future for myself. And this was the first ad email that I received on my university that I was extremely excited about and want to learn more about. And I, I want to seek this through to uh, as much as I can. And one more thing that I want to ask about is you mentioned that once the, uh, once the whole thing is done, you're supposed to go back. If I make a career for myself over there, if I work there, or if I marry someone there, am I capable of staying there? Uh, okay. <laughs> Hala, if you want to go ahead, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, um, if you want to apply for um, the work, the, the OPT that's allowed for, I guess, uh, one year of or 12 months, then you have to apply and you have to get the approval for the Department of State. Um, you might be lucky and uh, they might approve it and they might uh, not. Uh, however, mm -hmm. if you wanna apply to work, uh, yeah, after you get the, the master program, uh, then you have to live two years in Lebanon before you do that. Okay. What about marriage? Even if you get married. Even you if I get live, married. You have to come and live two years in Lebanon and then go. Okay. Go back. But you can go back at any time to continue your studies. You can go back at any time for tourism or for uh, business. Um, but if you want to apply to work, you have to... Uh, the have to whole... <laughs> and the reason, I, I just want to just wanna say mm -hmm. that the reason is the purpose of the Fulbright program, as, as I mentioned before, the Fulbright program... Um, is not a scholarship, it's, a, it's an exchange program, and you have to fulfill uh, the purpose of this program, which is yes, exchange. Of course. So you have to come back to Lebanon and benefit uh, Lebanon from what you've learned. And uh, where you are in the States, you'll be like ambassador representing Lebanon. Okay, I see. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, so, Tyler, just to add one small thing. Uh, yes. I naturally understand the urge for someone to be excited to go and build a career in the US, but I also want to iterate one, one thing. Um, once you get your, your academic experience there, um, when you come back to Lebanon or to the region more generally, uh, the opportunities that you have available to you will be much different than, than how the outlook looks right now. I'm not talking only about the economic, political uh, perspective around us, but also about how different employers will, will look at your profile uh, and what you will be able to bring to the table. Uh, so keep that in mind and don't let it be a deterrent if you want for you to apply just because your goal is to you know move somewhere else uh, just, so just just to keep this in mind yes that would be okay if i wasn't actually already currently in love with someone from america so okay. it's an end goal to begin with okay clear clear all right um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on to other questions, if that's okay. Um, so Francesco, uh, how did you actually choose the University of Lebanon? So the choice of the program, uh, this is part of the process in, the, in your Fulbright application. So you go through a series of applications, interviews, you do also a couple of tests, and then they shortlist a group of people for, um, to actually apply for universities. And you work with a person uh, from the program administration side who will help you choose a total of four programs to apply for uh, that fit, uh, that have a fit based on your grades, based on your experience. Uh, and they also ensure that these programs you're applying to are also in diverse places, right? They don't want uh, 2,000, 3,000 Fulbright users all to end up in New York City at the end of the day. So they want to make sure there's a, uh, they're found all around the US because this is also part of the program, the cultural experience that you get. Uh, having said that, the way I chose the program was step one, first I looked at some, I did some online research. I read about different financial engineering programs, which universities provide those programs. Uh, I looked at some rankings. From the rankings, I was able to, you know, recognize some universities, go read more about the program, which one is more fit with what I'm trying to experience. Some of them have a professional component to them. Some of them are more academic. They require you to write a thesis at the end of the program. So uh, when you reach that stage, it's more about trying to optimize based on your personal preferences from one end, and also the requirements and constraints that are set by the program administrators when you're applying to those programs. Uh, okay, um, I hope this answers your question, Francesco. Petra, uh, can you tell us more about the career path of financial engineering other than management consulting? Okay, sure. Um, so when we talk about financial engineering, what are, we really, what are we really learning? We're learning how to uh, do a lot of optimization techniques that are really at, at their core industrial engineering methods. Um, and applying them to the field of finance. So this opens a few doors for you. The first one is working as a trader, right? You might work as a trader in the equities market and the derivatives market uh, and so on. The other option is for you to work uh, also within the trading space, but as someone who prices these products. Uh, are these products undervalued, uh, overvalued, uh, and so on and so forth. So being uh, when you look at the trading desk at the major firms, you have multiple roles. You have the trader, you have someone who's the financial engineer, and you have the software developer. So you could be the trader, you could also be the financial engineer who's actually doing, uh, uh, writing the models uh, based on which trading decisions might be taken. You could also go and work at a bank in a risk management role. Uh, in banks and risk management roles, you, also, you always have a department related to asset liability management, to market risk, to credit risk. And these units really require someone with strong uh, skills, strong knowledge of the finance industry, strong uh, knowledge of different modeling techniques, what's value at risk, different ways to do value at risk, and so on and so forth. So you can also find a lot of opportunities within banks. Um, this is on the commercial banks. You can also find a lot of opportunities in private banks and asset management and wealth management, especially when it's more technical and requires you uh, to, to do some modeling on your own. 
uh, what else? You could also work in investment banks uh, in a role uh, also that's related to pricing complex derivatives and so on and so forth. Uh, insurance companies also might be interested a lot of times in financial engineers because they are able to understand risk, price risk, and the capital markets. And a lot of the products that insurance firms uh, look at and assess are, are similar in that nature. Uh, so really you're looking at insurance companies, you're looking at banks, you're looking at, uh, uh, man, uh, you're looking at investment banks. Uh, management consulting is not a traditional choice. Uh, it's much broader, much, you, you rely much less on your financial engineering knowledge per se. You, you use a lot of quantitative uh, analytics for sure, but not specifically related to financial engineering. So it's not the traditional path, um, but you have a lot of technical consulting. A lot of the financial engineers also go to the big four, uh, be it PwC, KPMG, EY. Um, uh, so they also work in very technical roles. They have, all of these uh, uh, consulting firms have pricing departments, risk management departments, which you could also work on. So there's, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of opportunities out there in different roles. Most of them tend to require someone with, with a strong quantitative suit. Okay. Um, Sen Al Hajj, what's the main factor you think plays a huge role in accepting the application and move on to the next level? Look, th these are clearly cited on the website when you look to apply. Uh, there are some things that are basically criteria, which we're not going to go into. Those are more on the application level. In terms of when we're looking at, like, what's the you know secret for success for someone to be accepted in the program? I would summarize it in being well-rounded. You need to have a strong academic uh, background, of course, uh, you need to show them that you're serious about what you want, you're clear about what you want, you want to show them that you're mature, and you also want to show them that you don't only care about developing yourself, but you also care about the others around you. Uh, because in essence, this program is about sending you to a different country, uh, the learning some specific topic, academic topic, exchanging that culture with other people, you will be learning from them, but you'll also be teaching them about the Lebanese culture and experience. And the reason there is the two year requirement to come back at the essence of it is so that you can share back from that experience to others around you. So you need to have, uh, and you need to exhibit the, that uh, characteristic that you care about others, you care about engaging in the society and it could be in different ways. You could be politically active, you could be socially active with others. There's no specific rule on how you do this. You could be active in a sports uh, team and you know you excite others to, to pursue that sport as well. So it's not limited to being part of an NGO or being part of a political group or anything. It's, it's more about showing that uh, engagement factor as well. Uh, anything to add on this, Hala? Or... Well, the first step uh, is to write good essays and explain what you were just saying, just to let them show them that you are serious, you know what you want, you are focused, uh, and you know what you want to come, what you want to do when you come back. So you have to find out what Lebanon needs, uh, and you have to explain how you're gonna make the change uh, or uh, uh, help in the change or create something new. So they have to know that you are. Uh, really confident of what you what you studied and what you'd like to study and your career. Okay, uh, great. So I see there's a couple of questions that are you know, linked. I'll answer them together. The first one is how did your specialization benefit Lebanon in the long term? And the other one is uh, after this amazing experience in the US, how do you feel the special impact you are making in our Lebanese company? Okay, um, so I'll take them one by one. On the first one, how did your specialization benefit Lebanon in the long term? Look, I can only answer in the short term because that's where I am so far. I, I came back in the end of 2017. I've been here for three years, uh, going into the fourth. Uh, it's been some time now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, so I'll answer up to now what I feel was the impact. And then I can, you know, try to entertain a couple of thoughts for long term. The first thing I want you to know is it doesn't have to be linked to your specialization. You know, I went and I studied financial engineering. 
And I always try to make my expertise available to the community around me, but it doesn't always have to be this way. Uh, I'm part of the Fulbright Alumni Association and a lot of the activities we do, some of them center around helping underprivileged people try to achieve their potential. We have a annual youth mentorship uh, day. And in this program, what we all try to do, be it me or the other Fulbright alumni, is to try to give back to those, uh, to our communities by looking at those high school students who might not have the best access to resources to advise them on how to take on their career going forward, uh, or which university to apply to, which major to take, what career choice should they make, uh, answering biases they might have around those areas. So by itself, being in the US, being exposed to these uh, top-notch academic programs and professional programs, having that rigorous training there and coming back, it will change your perspective on understanding around all of these topics. And it will really help you to give back to, the, to your community in any way you see fit. It could be directly linked to your career, right? And it can be not linked at all. It could be just from your experiences that you've had there, being able to come back and, and, and help give to your community. Now, to answer specifically if financial engineering might help, might, help, might help Lebanon in the long run, you know, no one knows there's a lot of opportunities in the private or public sector in Lebanon that require people with those skill sets. Uh, we hear a lot about financial engineering in the news lately, but in a bad way, but it doesn't have to be that way, right? Financial engineering can also be a tool for positive change and positive growth of the economy. Um, so there are definitely a lot of long-term opportunities. I'm not going to speculate if I'm going to be able to use them to help Lebanon in the long term or not, but I can definitely say that my experience in the US overall has allowed me to share with a lot of people around me how they can benefit from the same experience, A, like we're doing here, or more generally, how to remove the biases they might have about different cultures, about different career path, about different academic path, and how to best plan their way forward so that they could achieve social upward mobility. Um, okay, so I think this answers Sarah's question. Please tell me if it doesn't. Um, Elsa, after this amazing experience, how do you feel the special impact you are making in our Lebanese companies? So this is directly linked to what I just said, I believe. Uh, Adnan, could you please elaborate more on the internship you mentioned uh, happening during the summer? Okay. So on this point, um, so during my professional program, during my academic program in the University of Illinois, we had the summer where we were expected to either do a professional internship or do some academic work with the faculty. So I chose to go for a professional experience. The Fulbright program allows you to do so. Uh, so I applied to different internships, I got accepted to two different opportunities, and I chose uh, to go to Milwaukee, uh, and I worked as a quantitative risk an analyst with a mortgage insurance company. Uh, and it was really a great opportunity. For one, I also explored another state. So I was in Milwaukee and Wisconsin, which, were, which had a completely you know, different uh, setup, different environment, different culture. Uh, than Illinois, where I was in Urbana-Champaign, because there it was mostly a student community. Here it was more of a business hub and working community. So this was one step. Uh, the experience at work itself was amazing. I was working with a team uh, who had people from that many different nationalities. Some of them were American, some of them were uh, from East Asia, from different uh, locations around the world. So I was able to see uh, how to work with people from different nationalities and from different backgrounds. and uh, how, how we look at things differently, how we communicate things differently, and how to be able you know, to always get people to, the, to a, a common point and being able to work effectively with people from different cultures. Uh, and more than those two things, it was also uh, a learning opportunity for me because it was really about risk modeling and I was working with people who had 10, 15 years of experience in that field. So it really allowed me to learn a lot and to know what I like and what I don't like. Uh, so this, this was a bit more about the, the, the experience. And, and uh, it's a paid internship. So this was some, also some uh, money that I was able uh, to have on top of what uh, Fulbright program provides you in terms of financial support while you're there. Hi, James. Uh, I'm Hi, the I'm one that asked the question. Yes. So did you find it hard to find an internship while you were at the US 
or was it easy because you were a Fulbrighter? Okay, so uh, being a Fulbrighter definitely helps. A lot of corporations recognize that. That's the first point. The second point is that you're usually applying to some of the best programs out there, right? And just being, so you're associated to Fulbright, that's A. B, you're associated to a top program. Uh, and just the fact that you've been selected, you know, by this school and by Fulbright is usually uh, enough to get the recruiter, you know, interested in your profile and looking at that CV. Uh, of course, as long as it's a relevant role. So I, I'm not gonna say it was very easy, but it wasn't very hard either. Like compared to everyone else in the class, I, I found it quite uh, in, in a bit faster than a uh, bit faster than average. Was it stressful? Did you feel like uh, there was pressure on you because you were a Fulbrighter? Like as if you had to uh, prove as if you, know, you had the level of that you should meet some levels, or something like that, or was it normal? Look, uh, Fulbright stipulates, stipulates in, in their agreement, I believe, that you should maintain a certain level of academic uh, rigor while during your program. Uh, but, but really, uh, like, once you're there, I, I might have had those worries as thoughts when I was here. Maybe I didn't perform, maybe, you know, but once you're there, you're in the program, you're enjoying it, you're giving it your best. Um, most probably you won't even have time to think about these things. Okay, you're, you're gonna be uh, spending your time between your studies, attending classes, applying to internships, meeting different people, and going to different events. So, uh, not nothing to worry about. Okay, thank you, James. All right, um, Anthony, what's the difference between financial engineering and finance? Okay, so they're very closely related. Finance. Uh, focuses more on the less quantitative parts of finance and touches lightly on very quantitative finance. So when we talk about modeling uh, risk, about pricing complex products, about using coding to do these things, it has less stress on this and more stress on corporate finance. Uh, versus financial engineering, you see very little of corporate finance and a lot of pricing, derivatives, stochastic calculus, programming, the more uh, quant-heavy stuff. So this is it in a nutshell. Tarek uh, Raidan, to the best of your knowledge, do you know if it's possible to link financial engineering to NGO work, sustainability, or UN work? As I really wish, wish to pursue such a career. However, I have a passion for finance. Um, I think there would be a lot of opportunities around, uh, for that topic with different NGOs, something that comes to mind would be World Bank. They do a lot of work around sustainability, about fiscal reform, these sort of things. Uh, there I would advise probably more of a master's in economics and in finance rather than specifically financial engineering because it's a bit broader. But to be very frank, I'm not the expert on this topic. So please do more research or try to reach out to someone who works at these companies who could give you a better view. But short answer, I believe it's, yes, you can definitely find something with those two firms. Uh, I said, you encourage someone to pursue a master in financial engineering after a bachelor in accounting. Um, there's no deterrent to do that. One thing to keep in mind though, is to ask yourself, honestly, what's your level of, of uh, quantitative rigor? So when it comes to advanced mathematics, advanced statistics, uh, programming, what is your, you don't need to check all those boxes, but if you go to these different programs in the US and you look at the financial engineering programs, you'll see that they require a lot of, uh, they have a lot of statistics courses, quite advanced ones, uh, some programming courses as well. Um, so, you, uh, and also advanced finance, pricing, risk management and so on. So you need to at least at least tick some of those boxes. You don't have to tick all of them at all. I didn't have prior strong programming experience at all. And I picked this up during the program. So they don't expect you to be an expert in all of these, but you should uh, be able to assess if you have the academic rigor for advanced quantitative uh, courses. Hola, 
uh, when we reach the part where we have to choose which university will apply to, do we have to fill another application for university and wait for its acceptance? What is the process at this stage? Uh, Hala? <laughs> I think we can we can answer these questions in uh, when we talk about the application uh, process. So, but I can tell you that once you apply uh, with the help of MED in Washington, uh, DC, I think the application deadline by most of the universities will be January. And then you have to wait till May, end of May to get the results. Okay. Uh, so Rudy, uh, the most important things that you learned in the in US that weren't available to you in Lebanon. Look, I, I, I stressed quite a bit about this in the beginning of the workshop. I'll, I'll just tell you briefly again. It's, it's a lot of things, right? Uh, and it's different for everyone. So for me personally, I, I grew up uh, with people from the same culture, same religion, same background, same nationality. Went to the same people with school, similar university. So uh, my ability to capture diversity uh, on different levels was not that high on the radar when I was uh, young growing up. And the, the US experience, the whole experience provided me that, that's one. Number two is the level of academic rigor that I talked about. It's not that we don't have very good programs in Lebanon, yes we do. It's about that the people you're competing with are probably uh, all top students from different schools from around the world. And they also come from different cultures and different backgrounds, which brings different viewpoints and different approaches to solve problems. So this is something amazing that you can learn in the US and you can learn here. You can definitely learn more about the US culture and the US way of living and the US way of doing things for better or for worse when you're there that you can do here. So these are three things I would say off the top of my mind. Uh, Elian. Uh, from my perspective, it's a big need to rebuild our, for our country, especially after our economic crisis and being a food writer will give more credibility. Agreed, 100%. Uh, are we allowed to come back to Lebanon during winter breaks? Yes, of course you are. Uh, I came back for... Sorry? On their expenses, the program will pay the ticket uh, way to the exactly. state and when you finish the program, back exactly. to Lebanon. So you can come to Lebanon on your own expense. Uh, I came back for like a bit less than a month, so you can definitely do that. Um, Petra, did you have any professional experience, internship or work related to financial engineering before applying to the program? So I didn't have a uh, full-time professional experience. I had uh, done a couple of internships, one within banking, the other within insurance, not strictly related to financial engineering, but similar topics. Um, I think what you mean by your question also is, do these help? They definitely help in the sense that, A, they show that you have a passion for that. Uh, you've already tried to uh, do some experiences in that area, even if you haven't worked full time. Uh, and B, they also help you know if this program is for you, right? Because you might have an idea based on what you've read online or what you've studied that this is something interesting, but once you go and work in that space, you, you might find that it's not for you. So uh, I would highly encourage if you have the time to do an internship in your in that space, but at the same time, it's not uh, a deal breaker uh, if, if you don't. Okay. Any questions? Yes, I do. That's Adnan. Adnan, sorry. It's okay, Hello, that's okay. So James, uh, when you were in the US, did you have opportunities to make research? Uh, were you interested in that or what's your view on it? Look, um, you definitely have tons of opportunities to do research. You could actually choose a, a, a purely academic program to start with. Uh, I personally chose a professional program. There was no thesis to write at the end. This is how I wanted it. There was a professional component at the end. But tons of other people go the other way fully. They go for a fully academic program with a thesis at the end, then go on to pursue their PhD and so on and so forth. 
And as I said before, instead of the internship, I could have chosen to stay in the university and do research. I've had opportunities to do research, but it was a personal choice not to. Okay. Uh, Silva, with an actual background, why did you choose financial engineering over actuarial science? Does the background of bachelor in math help or prerequisites are required for either one? Okay. So uh, choosing financial engineering over actuarial science was a personal choice. Uh, I personally enjoyed the space around financial engineering more than actuarial. And I felt that my uh, background in actuarial science was, was sort of enough for me. If I wanted to go further in that space, I didn't feel I necessarily needed the master's degree. Um, so it was really a, a personal preference for, for financial engineering. A bachelor in mathematics is perfect. You, you will have some prerequisites that you're missing, but they usually don't care about that. They teach you everything from scratch. And if you go to these programs in financial engineering or in actuarial science, you see that a lot of the uh, people who enter the program have a background in finance, in economics, in mathematics, in engineering. So it's not a prerequisite to have a, a undergrad in finance or, or in actuarial science or something specific to do a master's that's fully specific. As long as they both have some quantitative rigor or have the finance aspect uh, and you can prove that rigor in some other way, you're good to go. Ali, I hold MBA degree, GPA, finance, finish my master's. Okay, 12 years of experience. Am I allowed to apply to this program? Hala? Um, usually you should have a GPA of three at bachelor level and uh, they prefer to give a chance for someone who doesn't have a master's degree. Uh, so the risk is high <laughs> not to be uh, um, given a chance. I mean, we can help you in applying to, if you'd like to apply for another master's, we can help you with Education USA uh, to find universities in the States that will give you uh, uh, a sistership in order to be able to, to fund the, the program. But uh, for the Fulbright, it's gonna be a little bit hard because if you wanna to apply to a master's degree in the States, any master's degree, they will require a three GPA. So you don't have it, uh, on the bachelor level or the, the master's level. Sorry, Ali. <laughs> okay, uh, Charlie, based on your experience, what are some tips you would give for effective networking and relationship building? Uh, look, this is a great question. Um, first, uh, I'll, I'll just say a few tips. One, have an open mind. Uh, two, uh, be a good listener so that you can be a good communicator. Uh, and three, don't be afraid to reach out. Be it sending uh, messages to people on LinkedIn who share a common background, a common uh, degree, common university, whatever it is. Just finding some common point to initiate a discussion. Some people will not reply, don't take it personal. Some people will reply, great for you. Um, be it going to networking events in the US and the universities, there's a lot of networking events, industry specific networking events, university wide, program specific. So go to these, also have an open mind, engage with different people, don't be shy, don't be the guy sitting, uh, don't be the person sitting in the background. Okay, so th those, those are a, a few uh, tips. And when we say different cultures, again, just be open minded. You, everyone is going to be speaking English. That's your common point there. Just go and open the discussion. Um, Francesco, in one word, how would you describe your entire Fulbright experience? We should make you a moderator, <laughs> Francesco. Uh, look, it, it's, it's life changing. That, that, that's it for me. Uh, the Fulbright experience allowed me to have access to opportunities and to experiences, be it in the program or afterwards, that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Uh, it is, uh, if I'm studying computer engineering, am I allowed to have a master's degree in financial engineering? Of course, you have a solid background in mathematics and in programming. 
what you lack is a bit of finance background. A lot of uh, financial engineering programs offer boot camps uh, to give you what you need in finance so that you're at the same level when you start the program with others. Um, but you will need to show in some way on your application that you're passionate about finance, be it reading personal books about finance, being following financial news online. Uh, like if you've just done computer programming and computer engineering and worked in software uh, companies your whole life and did nothing related to finance, they will have a question mark around. So you don't need an academic study in it. Uh, you don't need courses in it, but at least you need to show an interest. Uh, okay. Anything else? We've gone through quite some questions, I can see. Speaking of networking, uh, do you still have ties with uh, maybe doctors or alumni, Fulbrighters that you met at the US and did they help you uh, now as you're still in Lebanon, right? Or are yes. you somewhere else? I don't know. No, no, I, I'm in Lebanon. Um, look, uh, one, yes, I'm still in contact with uh, a few professors and uh, they help you, yes, depending on what you're looking for, right? If you're looking for advice, they're usually always there to give that advice. And uh, if, if, you, if you're looking to collaborate on, you, on research, if you're someone who chose an academic path, they'll definitely also reply to that. So depends what you want, right? If I'm looking uh, to, to look for a firm in the Middle East, they might not have that network to help me, but they're definitely responsive and willing to help. Uh, yes, you can ask questions however you want. George. Good evening, everyone. Hi, uh, this is George Hneni speaking. I'm, uh, I, I wanted to share my camera, but it's impossible. I am uh, 40 years uh, old, older than the 36 year old person who, who, who succeeded the Fulbright as Mrs. Halal I was talking last time. And I'm a sworn auditor with the experience in over 15 countries all over Africa and Middle East. I'm really happy to meet each every one of you people. It's really uh, something very interesting, very uh, empowering, very motivating. I have, in fact, uh, I, in also I have a bad experience in a uh, real trading environment in Lebanon, in addition to that. Uh, my concerns are in two questions, if you can help me through. I guess you are the best person to, to, to answer. Uh, first of all, with uh, coming back to Lebanon with your experience, uh, in the capital markets, Lebanon regulators, uh, do you see anything? Uh, uh, what can you tell me about that in, in, in the beginning? And my second question is that I am a survivor of four August blast in Beirut, and I got sponsored from Uzak University, where I'm in my second uh, semester now, my financial engineering student. Uh, I am in my fifth course, which is 15 credits. And uh, my concern is, uh, to cut it short, if you, uh, you, you would advise me to go for a master program or a PhD or, or, or from your point of view of his experience, what would you uh, guide me through? Because I, would, uh, I, I, I could be an asset. Uh, for instance, we know what's happening with the GameStop and, all, all, and every year there is listed companies at the SEC with bankrupted figures uh, every year. So I, I would be caring about uh, combining my skills between auditing and financial engineering and trading, uh, trying to find a, a stimulus uh, alert in advance about potential problematic companies. Uh, this is what just to achieve all over my, uh, my concern and my experience in life. So um, I would be happy if you can guide me through, please. Thank you. All right. Uh, th thank you, George. OK, so to, to break this down, um, first, when you talk about the capital markets in Lebanon, uh, what I know is that we have a very modest uh, equity market. Uh, and when it comes to things beyond equity derivatives, uh, they're not allowed. Uh, so. Unfortunately, uh, focusing on the markets per se, as they are today within the current regulations, there's not a lot to do. There's definitely interesting work to be done with, with the private sector, uh, be it with uh, securitization, be it with the banking. 
So there are some opportunities on the private sector, but per my understanding, not so much on the public sector. Um, the second question is more around your career and whether doing a master's is a, is a, is a good idea or not. Look, you have tons of, of industry experience. Uh, you're 40 years old and you're looking to sort of make an industry change from uh, being an auditor to work in financial engineering and risk management, more specifically, if I understood you correctly. Allow me, Be allow me. I, I, what I'm working on is building up my auditing experience with uh, the, the financial market for public listed companies. I am, I'm, I am adding up building to my experience. I'm not shifting, which is a okay. major... Uh, Thank you. Okay. Okay, clear. So you're, you're just looking to add that on top of your current experience to go into something more specific. What I would be cautious about when I'm doing that, um, if you want my advice, is to, to do things in reverse. Look at the companies you're interested to work in and see if the path you are taking on right now will help you actually get there. And the question is how to do that. Uh, to do that, just pick a company you like, pick a company you're interested in. And when you do, uh, try to reach out to someone from that organization with a similar role to what you would be interested in. Uh, and, and, and then ask them if what you're doing will help you get there. Unless Hello, you're, yes. I, I'm, I'm having my own auditing firm. I have been working in, in my, on my firm since five years. And uh, what I would see is, is, is potentially growth of the market in Lebanon and the Middle East of uh, Amina region, for instance. And uh, I, I'm concerned if I would just, you know, whatever we are learning at USAC is great. They are top leaders. I really respect these people, but we are always based about uh, our studies on the US market. So maybe if I would, uh, uh, stop my, my curriculum or shift the M2 uh, or whatever I, I, I already accomplished or, or I restart from, from zero at, at uh, Fulbright just to go there. This is what I'm, I'm thinking of. Okay. Uh, look, this is, there's two parts to this. First, we'll have to check with Hala here if there are any criteria around that, uh, given your uh, big, big experience. Um, I can't answer for that. Uh, the other part, if you want to quit a loan from, from the program here and go to the US, I don't know. I don't know what the exact program is like, to be honest, uh, and how it compares to programs in the US and whether going to a program in the US will help you uh, to actually come back and find a role with a, with, with a company here. Um, and if it would also make financial sense to do so. Uh, be it with Fulbright or otherwise. Um, again, you're at a different stage in your career than someone who's, who's just graduated. So um, I, I really don't have any advice to give you uh, based on what you just said. Um, on, only that you might be interested you know, to, to read more about the programs in the US, try to do a comparison with what you're getting out of them in Isaac and looking at the whole package, how much you're paying, uh, be it with a scholarship or without, and what you're getting out of it in terms of employment opportunities. Because even when you go to these financial engineering programs, you have to note one thing, the average age is usually small. So the companies that come to target those programs and to recruit from them um, are not uh, usually looking for senior positions, more for junior positions. Now, if you're coming back to your own company, then it's just a question of economics, right? Do, you, do I do a program online with the US? Do I do it uh, only in Lebanon and pick up what I want online? Because if it's your own firm, you don't care about the recruitment aspect fully if you want to stay within your own firm. And then you're just looking about the knowledge which you could accumulate in different ways. Um, yeah, I hope this answers. Yeah. I mean, you can feel free to call me tomorrow at the, the office. Uh, you have my email and you have the phone number from the email that I just sent you an hour ago. So feel free and we can discuss this uh, over the phone. Thank you very much. Hello, Sahel Afik. Thank you, George. Uh, thank you, Patricia, for the kind words. 
All right, so um, at the end, I would like to thank you, James, a lot for uh, sharing with us this very impressive uh, experience uh, and uh, for the time you gave us. We greatly appreciate it and we thank you again. And um, please feel free to call us tomorrow or anytime to learn more about the Fulbright and you will have more chance to meet with Fulbright alumni. Uh, I will send you emails about it and uh, don't miss these opportunities. Thank you, James, again, and thank you, everybody. So from my end, just thank you again, uh, Hala, uh, Amidis, and Department of State, everyone, for providing this opportunity, whether to speak with others or the Fulbright experience. Thank you, James.